Marge, can you confirm that you are looking at a carriage? Yes. <laughs> All right, good. So this is the beach in Rehoboth in 1910. This is the diorama. I sometimes the diorama is so realistic, thanks to folks like Richard Siegel, who is on with us, that I need to share that this is a picture of the diorama. So this is a picture of the diorama. Uh, we're at the beach. And if you can see my cursor, you can see the boardwalk across the back. It's elevated. That's how it was in 1910. And also across the back, you can see Hills. This is Hills Bathhouse. Mm -hmm. And there are, um, there are clotheslines out here with uh, the old uh, wool bathing suits on them. And uh, I just thought I'd share with you out of interest that uh, Mrs. Edward Hill assisted in Hills Bathhouse operation. And she washed all of the uh, bathing suits and the towels. That was her daily job in the summertime. And in her spare time, she raised five daughters and five sons. At five o'clock. One of which, one of whom did an oral history for uh, the museum, which has been a source of uh, a lot of information. The focus of this picture is the, is the carriage here. And the reason why I uh, have included this picture is because uh, folks back in the early 1900s would take a, a, a trip down the beach from Rehoboth. That was uh, an event. They would take a carriage, sometimes their own and sometimes a rented carriage, down to see the Cape and Lopen Lighthouse. Now, the lighthouse uh, was a, a, a romantic uh, destination. In fact, uh, folks would Couples presumably would walk down the boardwalk to its north end just to uh, enhance the image of the Cape and Lopen Lighthouse. So um, I wanted to make sure, and, and Marge confirmed that people can see the next picture yep. now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if I raise that a little bit, now I want to go back. I think I want to escape here for a minute. And I think I can, oh, I see Richard A has entered. Okay. Um, if I get, okay, I'm losing my ability to actually move. Okay, there we go. All right. So if I, I increase this, I think, can everybody, can everybody yes. see that? Yes, Paul. Okay, so there is the, there is a, an actual picture of a six horse carriage that was used uh, to to carry people down to the uh, to see and take a tour of the Cape and Lopen Lighthouse. So that is the picture based based upon which Richard Siegel, who was on with us, created that uh, scene. Now, if I can figure out, all right. Now, uh, Marge, I am. Can I, let's see, oh, there we go. All right, good. Yeah. All right, now, you, are you seeing the next picture now? Yep. Okay, so this is the, what people would think of now as the Bellhaven Hotel. It's actually the, uh, was back in 1910, the Casino Hotel. And what I'd like to point out about this, Richard uh, Siegel built this model as well. And what I'd like to point out are the red lights on the second floor. And I would like to read you from the, the, the uh, just a short paragraph from the Rehoboth Beacon, uh, July 1st, 1899. You may be intrigued to realize that it was in fact a Rehoboth newspaper in 1899. But here's the short paragraph about what's going on there at the Bell Haven, what was then the Casino Hotel. Here it is. The electric light plant was put in operation at the casino on Saturday evening, the 24th of June, and produced an illumination such as Rehoboth has never known. 
red lights were placed on the upper balcony and other 16 candle power lights over the rest of the buildings with a brilliant white light occupying the center of the dancing pavilion. Probably didn't know that there was a dancing pavilion in there either. <laughs> but take for take a moment and 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 reflect on the sign here. Look at look at the back features of the building. Look at the sign here, and look at the uh, the stairwell and the rockers over here. And if I take us now to the next picture of the casino hotel. In Rome, this is what was modeled, what the model was basically the principal picture upon which the model was uh, was based. You can see over here uh, the back of the building, there's the sign, there's the stairwell, and there are the rockers, all of which have been uh, replicated. And you can also see here's an interesting shot of what we'll call the oval, the grassy oval, until for the first 150 years of 125 years of Rehoboth's history, uh, there was in fact a grassy oval. It's now pretty much all uh, blacktop uh, or gazebo right there at the end of Rehoboth Avenue. So if I proceed to another little uh, known fact uh, about Rehoboth, this again is the diorama. This uh, was a model produced by Mike Baker, who I don't believe is on with us. But at any rate, it is the uh, excursion house, which was owned by the railroad. And the reason why I provide this picture of the diorama is because I wanted to point out the news hawker, the newspaper hawker here with his magazine rack and newspapers uh, and there's a fellow reading the newspaper. I am told without confirmation that this is the origin of browse about books. So there you have that little uh, intro there. Now if I go uh, to this uh, image, if you can see my cursor, this area that I am circling here is the area of the diorama. That's the area of the diorama. And you can see the casino hotel is right here. Marge, can you see my pointer pointing at the casino hotel? Marge, are you there? Yes, I'm sorry. I keep muting myself. So oh, okay. I won't be making, but yes, we can see it and All we right, can see your see cursor. The there's the casino hotel, if I increase this a little bit. Okay, you can see Horn's Pavilion. That carriage and Hill's bathhouse is, well, it's not on here, but that carriage would be right here. And the buildings that you will see, uh, in the, here's the excursion house, by the way, in front of which was what I said was the origin of Browse About Books, the hawker there. So. Once again, the diorama is this portion. I have to keep oriented people. I, I find people have difficulty uh, with, with recognizing it and I continually have to orient. So this is First Street. So this is only the block that was between First Street. So you have today, you have Frog Pond here, you have Nicola's here, uh, First Street Station's here. So this is First Street. The, the train station was inside of First Street, so it was in the last block. And then, uh, so then we go out to the, to the beach. Okay. Here's one old picture from about 1912 that I just, I'm just showing. It's an interesting picture because uh, people realize that the, the boats in the background have been photoshopped, have been photoshopped in. But, um, if I, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, uh, now you can see Horn's Pavilion. Uh, this is the Casino Hotel. And this is the only picture I have that actually shows that 
excursion building. The excursion building was used by the railroad for the folks that come in and sometimes as many as five or six, seven train cars full of people. And uh, they would uh, apparently picnic lunch in this excursion building. There were other things done that were done in the excursion building, including uh, lot sales of lots in Rehoboth in the early years. And, um, and voting was done in there. Okay, so with that, I would like to ask Cindy, my wife, to pick up. I'm going to go back. Let me get back to me. Let's see how I do this. Okay, I want to go back to participants. What do I want to go back to? You want to, to go to stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay, new share. For the minute until you get everything. All right, how do I stop? Oh, stop sharing. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so there we are. Okay, good. Okay, so um, what do I do? Speaker view, exit full screen. What do I do to get me back looking at me? Can't you see yourself? I can up here, yeah. As soon as uh, you talk, you're, you're in speaker view. So when you talk, your picture will come up. Okay, no, no. What, what can people see now? Can they just see me? Yeah. Okay, I guess they can. Okay. So I'm going to get up now, and Cindy's picking up the computer. I'm moving slowly. And uh, let's establish whether whether people can can see me or not. Okay. Can you see me? And can yes, we can. Both a little bit more. That's it. Okay, you can see me. You see the diorama. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, here's the train station, right? Well, here is this is First Street. First Street, right? Beaches that away. Beaches that away. All right. Can you can you pan up that pan down, Cindy, to see the beach? All right. So here's the beach. This is all the diorama. Okay. Yep. Tilt down a little bit. Okay. And now we'll go back and just. Uh, no, wait, let him look at this. We're going to come back there. Okay. okay. All right. So we're going we're gonna to come back over here and we're going to look at the south side of Rehoboth Avenue. All right. And uh, yeah, so First Street, right? So we have here some uh, fruit stands. This is a Queen Anne, Queen Anne boarding house. This is a spur. This has got nothing to do with how the train turned around. Okay, but this is a spur for a freight line, presumably freight line that went out to Laurel Street, where there was a concrete block factory and a fish. Cindy, can you tilt that just a little bit? They can't really see the spur. Okay, tilt it up or back? I'm not sure. Okay. Now that's oh, good. Okay. That's there good. That's it. That's it. The spur. Okay, so yeah. here's the spur. Okay. This is the excursion building we talked about a little bit earlier. This is a merry-go-round. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but the merry-go-round goes around. We'll come around there. We'll, we'll see this from the other side. But anyway, uh, Richard Siegel created that merry-go-round for us. It is absolutely beautiful and it rotates. This is Blackiston's Pavilion where uh, folks would get ice cream that became Boyd's ice cream, which many people will know, may remember, and it became Snyder's. Snyder, the new Snyder's is over here now, but that's where the old Snyder's was. And people enjoyed ice cream there for 100 years. I guess 100 years. Okay, so then here's the boarding. I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm in there. I back up just a little. This is the boarding house, the uh, Truett's boarding house. Uh, and this is town, the Townsend Hotel. We got John Wiley on here who informed me that for about a year, okay, first it was the Townsend Hotel, then it was the Thayer, the Thayer Hotel, then it became the Diamond State Hotel, which is when his ancestor, grandfather, I guess, uh, owned this. And ultimately becomes the Rehoboth Hotel, which lasted there uh, for many, many years. Uh, years until the late 1980s or so. And this porch across the front, you'll notice it has wings on it so that air can get in from both sides. 
And we have uh, one of the, the folks, Donna Vassilotti, that uh, has helped me with some of the history here, said that she used to run up and down that porch when she was a kid in the 50s. Townsend, the original owner of this hotel, was a very famous uh, individual uh, in Delaware. He owned the Atlantic Cannery on the other side of the canal. He owned a house on the cross the street on Rehoboth Avenue. He became the governor of Delaware, was very active in uh, supporting World War I. And then he became uh, a, a, a Delaware regiments to, to go into World War I. And then he became the uh, US Senator for Delaware for 12 years. And there are books written about him. This is the uh, Stewart's Drug Store. Uh, it turns out that uh, that was purchased later by Moore. Rob Moore still lives in town, a descendant. And uh, Moore's Drug Store Chad. started out here. Chad Moore. Rob Moore. Chad Moore. Chad Moore. Sorry, not Rob Moore. Chad Moore. Okay. <laughs> they moved uh, the uh, Moore's down the street. Okay, now we have an open spot. I'm about to send uh, Richard a, a specification for this particular location. There's a large residence right here, which we got integrated into the Bellhaven Hotel in 1914, and then three smaller buildings here, uh, which were Hill's Bathhouse. Now, of course, here we have the Bellhaven Hotel in, in, all, its, in all its glory. It has outbuildings. It has outbuildings which include the movie theater. If you could move that around and look here this way so that we can see the front of the Bell Haven from the boardwalk. Yeah. Can we see that? Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so at any rate, there's a moving picture theater here. I think it also served as a dance hall. And then there were uh, the casino bath bathhouses were here. Okay. Uh, right here, you'll see the grassy oval and you'll see some cows in there. It was pretty big. Uh, it was one of the early things in 1891. They had to find a way to watch out. This watch out for the yeah. Okay. They had to find a way to uh, stop the cows from roaming free in in the uh, village circle there, the grassy oval. So now, if we focus now on the Horns Pavilion, can everyone see Horns Pavilion? Yep. Large, can you see that yep. Pretty? Yep. Uh, yeah, so very famous. This is probably the most famous building. Uh, it was on the beach, over the beach. If you've been watching my videos, you realize it was only there from about 18, 1903 or four, uh, it, it expanded in various forms, but it went down in the storm in 1914. On the back of this is a merry-go-round. The merry-go-round went in about 1908, didn't last that long. And then we have the octagonal pavilion where they held Sunday school classes. And out here we have the fishing pier. There were two fishing piers in Rehoboth. And uh, this was the first one. And it was built by uh, Charles Horn. He had dreams that we were going to, we were going to dock uh, paddle wheel steamers there and sailing ships. But that didn't happen. In fact, in the end, he couldn't even keep up with his lease payments to the city for Horns Pavilion. Okay, so now Cindy and I are going to now switch. You've already seen the picture of the of where that carriage was on the beach. Let me catch a one more shot of that. If you come over here, all right. Can you see the carriage on the beach? Yep. Yeah. All right. So there's carriage and Horns Pavilion, and and if she goes around now, move the chair out of the way. Let's go back to the far end. Yep, I'm doing it slow. All right, we're gonna close your eyes for a minute. We'll walk down here, walk down this way. All right, so this is uh, the the other end of the, the diorama. Can you see me here just about? We can't see you, but we can see the diorama. All right, perfect, that's good. So uh, this is the oldest house on Rehoboth Avenue. It was built by uh, Lorenzo Del Martin. He's one of the original folks that sold a farm to uh, Reverend Todd. And he was interested in getting this town started. So he, uh, he, he built this house. This house lasted for at least a century. And for those people that may remember, 
uh, it as uh, the Anna Hazard House, which it became in the 1930s or something like that. It was built in the 1870s originally. Then we have uh, Doug Wingate, or, or the Win Doug Wingate is the sponsor. Okay, the Wingate Homestead here, old folks in Rehoboth. Satterfield, he was a conductor on the train, and that house still exists. Patrick Gossett is on with us, and he's he's the sponsor for that particular structure. And Howard, and Howard Menneker also. Um, and by the way, um, yeah, that house still exists. And if you want to go see it, it's on Dover Street. Drive by in the spring. It's it's beautiful with the azaleas. Right here is the Back Porch Cafe, uh, which was then the Marvell Boarding House. And, and prior to that, it was some guy's cottage. Okay. Uh, but anyway, and behind it, we have uh, some of the outbuildings, including the bath, bath houses. So uh, here is uh, the uh, tra the hotel trailer. Trailer. No. Tra no. What is it? Okay, it's a hotel. I have to read. At any rate, uh, that was the that was the hotel that was there. Now it is the brick front building, Ocean Block. Remember, Ocean Block, brick front building. It has the T-shirt factory in it. Back then, it was far more beautiful, and uh, it's called the Brayton Hotel. I'm sorry, it's the Brayton Hotel. So at any rate, uh, wraparound porches. These. Uh, Gables are very visible, and so from whenever you see a picture of old Rehoboth and you can see those gables, you'll know exactly where the picture came from. This is the Beebe uh, Cottage, Richard and James Beebe, before they established the, uh, the hospital, had a cottage in Rehoboth from which they operated, in both senses of the word, operated, uh, and that's where they did that. There's this carriage right there. Okay, and as we move down, this All is All right, a, we're, we're, we're losing the actual site to the diorama a little bit, if you can move it. I okay. don't know which way to tell you to move it up or down, but now we're coming back into focus. Yeah, now we can see it. All right, so Great. that this is a, a complex of buildings, which I'm gonna do a video about pretty soon. I don't know if we, I don't think we have Alice Cannon on, uh, but she's a sponsor of these buildings because her ancestors. So uh, actually, I should say that Till uh, uh, Purnell uh, is right now 100 years old, and she, her daughter, her granddaughter, her daughter, Alice Cannon, Alice Cannon, yeah. Uh, sponsored this series of series of buildings and horns pavilion because her grandparents were tappans and horns horns eventually purchased this series or leased this series of buildings which included a vaudeville theater and a uh and a and a and a silence movie picture uh, uh, ultimately it becomes the blue hen hotel for those of you who blue hen theater for those of you who remember the blue hen theater that's this location right here but we have various people represented in, in here, including uh, Till Purnell here in front of the theater. Uh, we have um, we have many many uh, Tappan who, who is here. See, it's the grandmother, uh, and then we have Messick's uh, doctor's office here. Doctor Messick was very influential. In 1908, during a scarlet fever epidemic, you see he's uh, he's actually getting ready to get on his carriage right there, and uh, and then we have a pretty iconic building here, which started out as the Royal Roller Rink. Now we have an open spot right here. Okay, can you see this open field right here? Yes, I think you can see it. Okay, yeah. so right here is the YWCA building. And I want to show you a picture. Now I'm going to go back to my desk. That's the diorama Before, we can. Let's look at the merry-go-round. We didn't see. Oh, the merry-go-round. Let's take a look at the merry-go-round. Mary, let's see. Uh, go down a little bit. Can you see the merry-go-round going around, Marge? Yes. 
Yes, you can. Right. There's the merry-go-round. Just oh, the... wait a minute. We lost it now. You went up. It went to, yeah. Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Um, back towards you, Sam. Are you getting Several... it? Yet? Yeah, we. You can just barely see it. All right. Hold on. There. Yep. That's perfect. That's perfect. Right. Well, there's the merry-go-round. Yeah. I'm going to take the computer now. I'm going back to the desk. So that's an introduction to the diorama. Can I ask you to show something a minute? Because I yeah, please do. Yes. When you were showing it to me the other day, I thought it was really nice how you've arranged along the outside those little placards that so that for people when they come to see the diorama. Yes, those placards. Right. So there. The placards describe each building. Now, in addition to that, uh, we're going to have, we'll, we'll probably have a video about every one. I can tell a story about every building on here. So I thought you, if you might want to test me on that. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's how the, uh, this is how the, the sponsors are recognized at the bottom. And there's a story about that particular building. And so that's all the way around the diorama. Now I don't have the I don't have the skirts on the on the beach scene yet because if I do I lose mobility in the room here. But I do have all of the can you see this? No, we just lost you completely. Lost me completely. Oh, okay. That's okay, now you're back. I had my finger over the camera. Yeah, okay. you did. <laughs> well, anyway, there we go. These are these are the sponsorship placards that are will go on the skirt around the beach scene. So anyway, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Whoops. Okay. Okay. Now I'm back. I have one more. I have one more picture to share now. If I share the screen. And I go here. This is the YWCA building that has on the way and expected to arrive at my house in the next day or so. Uh, Richard Siegel, if everyone was on, I, I wish you'd give him a, a hand for uh, creating such a beautiful rendition. I send specifications, multiple page specifications with pictures. And uh, Richard Siegel is one of the two model builders I have that uh, that replicates them. I have one more picture of that. This is the back end of it. If you'll notice, that was a large area on the diorama. There was, in fact, the pasture between the YWCA building and the Royal Roller Rink, which is right up here. So um, what a cool thing. We've got wagon wheels here and horses in the pasture. and. Now we even have a cupola on top of the, the little guy there. Okay, so that having, let's see if I can escape from that and stop sharing. That's my introduction to the diorama. And I would be happy to have you ask questions if you would like. Okay, so we have, no one has written in any comments or questions. So I'm gonna sort of, unmute people. If you raise your hand, um, if you go to participants, if you click on the bottom and click on participants, you can raise your hand if you have a question and that would allow us to call on you or I could just unmute everybody and let you all talk over each other. Um, okay. Okay, here we go. Um, Larry, no, I'm sorry, Howard Sear has a question. Okay. Um, let me unmute him. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Howard, did you have a question or a comment? It's not letting me unmute him. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go to um, Rosalind Merrill. Yes. Hi. Hi, Rosalind. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Lovett, do you know where 
Hill's bowling alley was. I've heard about his bathhouses, but the bowling alley, do you know where that was? I can't hear him. Oh, he's, wait a minute. He's oh, hold on, you're muted. Paul, you're muted, unmute yourself. I'm sorry, Rosalind, let me get back and unmute him. The wife to the rescue. Now he's okay. Paul, did you hear Rosalind? Rosalind? Yeah, Rosalind, yeah. <sighs> he's still muted. I know. And Unmuted. I muted him twice. There. Okay, All right. Let's start over. Hear me, Rosalind? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Now, there was a bowling alley. I'm not sure it was. <laughs> I'm not sure in the end it was Hills Bowling Alley, but I would say right behind Hills uh, there, which was on the beach. Now this would be behind where Dolly's is today. Where who? Where Dolly's is. Oh, Doll. Oh, okay. Okay, right there. There was a duck pin bowling alley. And uh, I'm told that uh, uh, I just read uh, Oral History by Blackie. Boy, by Blackie, I forgot her last name, but at any rate, she was one of, uh, she was uh, Till Purnell's uh, sister. Is it Nygood? Nygood, right. At any rate, she said that uh, boys used to, uh, they would be pin setters, and at the end of a bowling lane, they would throw a dime down to tip the, to tip the, uh, <coughs> Uh, hmm. The reason I ask is oh. half half of uh, the bowling alley is my house, and I got this information from Ed Hill, and he's and they moved it here in the twenties, and the other half was moved to another house on I believe Oak, which is since burned down. Okay, there were several bowling alleys, Rosalind. In fact, I was going to say, yeah. Let me just say that I have actually taken a picture. If you were to walk back. In the arcade that is just north, just behind Dolly's. Right. And Actually, that probably is not the one because I think my brother worked there when he was a teenager. Really? As a pin boy, yeah. All right. The the bowling lanes still exist in that floor. Oh, They're really? still there, and the bowling the building is still there. And the reason why I thought maybe that reference would be to a Hills bowling alley was because it was right, behind, it was right on the beach on the other side of the boardwalk. I have to do some video to all these weirdo boardwalk. And we do have pictures. If you contact me separately, I might be able to find a picture. I don't know, but there were multiple board. They well, it went from private boardwalk. Thirty-seven participants to twenty-nine. Okay. Okay, do we have any other yes, questions? We do. Yes, we do. Um, the Howard, Howard Sear, who, had, who I tried to let him speak himself, was actually asking, and I can answer that, uh, is this being recorded? And if so, will it be available for others to see? Yes, I am recording this, and it takes us about a week to two weeks to get it uh, up on the website, but it should be within... Within two weeks, it'll be on the website, our website, the Rohit Beach Museum's website for anyone to see. And that's also Jim Overdahl had the same question. Um, Larry Tarabikos. Tarabikos. Have, you have Bottom your hand up? <laughs> Larry, yes. did you have a comment or a question? Yes, okay. yes, thank you. And uh, yes, happy to be sponsoring the boardwalk for Paul. Paul, you're doing a great job. You've been a huge help to me. I've, I've learned so much about the history of Rehoboth over the last month and with your start. And uh, I just hope that what you're doing will help to educate all of the citizens in Rehoboth Beach so that maybe some of these great great buildings can be brought back again and uh, some of the old glory of Rehoboth. Um, I just think if that old Bellhaven Hotel could come back in some form of the old 
hotel. It would do wonderful things for the city. And I, I just think you're doing a terrific job. So thank you. Thank you very much. I would, I would say, I, you know, I forgot this. I got all nervous and I forgot a section I was going to do. But why did I get interested in this? I thought people might be interested in knowing that. Uh, I'm 73 years old. I've come to Rehoboth to this exact location. And I live right next to the canal, right across from the museum, right next to Egg Restaurant, for those people that know that now. Um, and uh, so I've come back here for 73 years. I used to play on the canal bank when I was a kid in the 1950s. It wasn't until 60 years later that I realized that a railroad bridge came across the canal within a hundred yards of where I played on the bank. And as a result of that, I started reading about the history and visiting the museum and visiting multiple museums and reading the minutes from the uh, commissioner's meetings and reading all of the Rehoboth newspaper magazines, newspapers, that Rehoboth newspaper actually started in 1873. Uh, it had a couple of lapses there, uh, but at any rate, uh, so I've read everything. and I've read all the oral histories. There are 120 of them and all of them have about 25 pages. Um, and uh, so thank you, uh, Larry, for your kind words. Okay. Paul. Uh, we have one. Paul, Trey, yeah. uh, Trey Rockenbach has okay. several comments. Trey, I've unmuted you if you'd like to go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, and it's Tree, by the way. I'm oh, sorry, I, Tree. Okay. I hate to do that to people. I apologize. <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, I, I, I had I had three. I hope you don't mind. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to know, um, uh, my husband and I do not live in Rehoboth, and we're lucky if we might get there once a year. Sometimes. We don't always, so it's a little frustrating sometimes when like you, you do a special program at the museum and we can't make it. Um, and I was wondering, uh, is there a way that people can see this diorama when they come to town, um, you know, either like by appointment or, or is, is it going to end up in the museum at some point or uh, something like that? Okay, so first of all, should I just answer that question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, a many many people even even on this video have actually stopped by the house and i say if you wear your mask i will bring you up and you will see it <laughs> i don't want it to stay here for it doesn't do anybody any good for it to stay here so the museum has graciously accepted it for periods of time and we had intended to uh have it have it there and if you'll um for for periods of time yet to be determined exactly how long. But at any rate, uh, you'll notice that I now have created, a, a, with a pretty significant little project, uh, guards. I don't, I don't want to have it covered completely because, frankly, it is most interesting from about a foot away as you look underneath the porches and so forth. Yeah, my wife won't let me cover it. <laughs> because it's so much fun to just look at the details. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have a foot high glass, uh, tempered glass guard that, uh, and the whole thing is sectionalized uh, a tree. It's sectionalized so that it can be moved. So I've actually done a presentation with it at the senior center. I've done one at the library and last year I did one at the museum and it is sectionalized so that I can move it. And I do want to make it extend it all the way across the, re the canal. I live next to the canal. Yeah. What's interesting to me is what the canal looked like in 1910. It's fascinating. Yeah. It's fascinating. Well, my, see, my second question was going to be whether you had any plans to do any other dioramas showing different eras, like say the mid 20th century. But I'm thinking now that you mentioned that, maybe your focus really should be on just expanding with you know, the area in the golden age there. I, I think that's all I'm gonna have the energy to do. It's, it's a multiple year project as it is. I do intend and I'm planning to specify the next table, which is to the west of First Street. Interesting buildings there. 
Dick's Grocery Store is on the other corner of, of First and Rehoboth Avenue on the north side. Uh, fascinating building, burned down in 1914. Oh, wow. It was a rough year. That 1913, 1914 was a rough year. Huge fire in Rehoboth, okay, that, that burned down Dick's Grocery Store. He put his goods out in the street, then he's got his goods filtered, uh, pilfered away. He didn't have insurance and he was a sad guy for the rest of his life, according to his granddaughter. <laughs> uh, at any rate, but uh, the Dick family was prominent uh, as part of the Thorogood family that had a lumber yard, which will be uh, modeled on the, it was on the south side of Rehoboth Avenue in between First and Second Street. There's a gas station, which I think I'll model, the very early gas station. Um, the city hall was in that, was in that uh, area. And then uh, uh, several boarding houses. Now, then you go back between second and third street, uh, second and third street where today the civic center is in this town hall. That was the public school in 1910. Wow. So we got to model the public school and Petta John's grocery store and Petta John and Kunzman store and an antique store. By the way, that antique store was a, was a tiny uh, double, uh, double peaked uh, room on uh, our house on one lot. And it was an antique store that got moved half of it. First of all, Half of it was the post office, the first post office in Rehoboth, which was in private homes in those days. The other half of it is now moved and still exists on Second Street in Lewis. It's a dress shop. Oh, wow. And it's fun to go over there and ask those guys if they know about the history of the building, most of them. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, let me ask you one, one more very quick question. Um, I have a postcard, uh, probably, I'm thinking 1920s, it's got the white border around it, I think, um, the Bellhaven. And, and I've got actually a number of postcards of the Bellhaven Hotel that are very similar, but only this one shows a Ferris wheel. And it's, it's looking, at, it's, like, it's like you're on the boardwalk looking, at, yep. looking south uh, western, and it looks like there's this little Ferris wheel sticking out from behind the Bellhaven, I haven't seen any other postcard showing this. Do you know anything about that? Yes. Uh, it was, in fact, uh, not a small Ferris wheel. It was a pretty large Ferris wheel. And yeah, it, was, okay. it was part of Playland. It was part of Playland. It would have been there from 1930. Yes, Playland. Not Funland. Right. Okay, as distinguished from Funland, which was across... Uh, on the other side of the Delaware Avenue there. Uh, uh, and it, so actually I told you about uh, a story about Blackie Nygood. She remembers that Mary Garment, uh, that Ferris wheel. Oh, wow. It was like, it couldn't have been there very long. 1932 to 1935 probably went down in a storm. I, I gotta believe there were storms. By, by the way, the boardwalk's been replaced 10 times at least. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it because I've been so curious about that. That is a real Ferris wheel and, <laughs> and it was there and that's the only picture. I have that picture. As a matter of fact, I think I, I, I actually showed that, didn't I? No. Okay. Well, I'm not sure, but at any rate, yeah, I could show you that but if I went to that, but I think it might take me a couple of minutes to fumble around. All my pictures of all these buildings are filed by location. And I have got a lot of history that's subsequent to 19, to the railroad era. We're using the word 1910, it actually should say the railroad era was 1879 to actually 1940. Passenger service stopped in about in 1928. But uh, the, railroad, that, the railroad era is longer than, than we're using, Marge. It's 1940 we should use okay. as railroad. It was freight service for those other 10 years, freight service out to um, the- uh, Georgetown? Block factory. No, 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 no. No, oh, I okay. mean, within Rehoboth, uh, oh, out, okay. to, out to Laurel Street. Dave Cushman has a comment. 
Dave, if you can unmute yourself. I, I think I have. Okay. Hi, I'm Dave, I'm Dave Cushman, and our family has been coming to Rehoboth uh, every year since the uh, mid-50s. And uh, my aunt had, one of the, had the original uh, uh, condominium at the Edgewater house. She bought the very first unit. Wow. Back, back, wow. In, the, back in the 70s. Uh, Paul, I'd just like to thank you so much for what you're doing. The, uh, the videos we've been watching as a family, and uh, they're very, very interesting and an excellent job. Uh, ju just a comment about the bowling alley that was uh, being discussed earlier. Uh, about 10 years ago, my brother, brother in law, and I got to talking with the manager one evening at Dolly's. And for some reason, he made the mistake of inviting us back to the back of Dolly's, which I called the bowels of Dolly's. Yeah. It was amazing what we could see back there, the, the old equipment, a lot of stuff hanging on the walls. And behind the, the a, lot of, a lot of cooking equipment hanging on the walls from probably the 30s and 40s. But back behind the arcade, uh, he, he showed us evidence of a bowling alley. Yeah. Some of the flooring that was back there was, in fact, you know, the type of maple wood that, that you would see at a bowling alley. Yeah. So I was just trying to add that comment to the discussion about the, about the bowling alley. Nice. Thank you. I have not had that nice of a tour. I've got to talk to that guy and see if I can't get that tour. I walked back sort of on a rogue walk on my own when the door was open. <laughs> and I did identify the bowling lanes in the back. There you go. <laughs> well, so, thank you. thanks again. We really appreciate what you're doing. Thanks, Dave. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. I would expect to do some more. I could do a video of every house on the diorama. In fact, I wrote a story about um, Commodore Shock, who lived where the, uh, what's the name of the restaurant? Uh, Obie's is now. He had a house where Obie's is now. He was one of the commissioners that took over from the uh, religious folks in 1891. And his house was on the boardwalk. He had been a pretty famous, uh, a, a pretty famous uh, naval officer in the steamship era, particularly the Civil War era. In fact, several Civil War generals and colonels and other officers and naval folks retired to Rehoboth. Rehoboth has been famous as a place for people to go since 1873 and still is. We got famous people <laughs> living, living here. I mean, Joe Biden has a place, right? Right here. So. Uh, uh, Paul, I have a question for you. Um, and when you were showing the, the pavilion, earlier on your thing. And in the museum for years, there's been this huge red ball that evidently was out there attached to a, a, a rope that women could use. Was that by the pavilion? And will you eventually put that in your diorama? Oh, let me show you what a wide open question here. Let me, <laughs> let me show you. Can you That's see it? it? Yeah. Can you see the rope? Oh, there's I can no, now. There's no orange ball there because at the time this picture was taken, there was no orange ball, but that rope is there. And that was used by uh, folks who particularly said that the women would uh, grab that rope to help them survive the surf. Now. In my judgment, I'm not sure whether that would have drowned them or saved them by grabbing that rope. But there it is on the diorama. And Mike Baker, who did this portion of the diorama, you know, put that on there because I specified that he do that. So anyway, there you have it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. I hadn't noticed it. Yeah, the, big, the red ball, yeah, that can contribute to the story. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments that they... Cindy, Cindy had just pointed out uh, that we should say that the, the stage for the Blue Hen Theater 
is the women's section of Carlton's men's store, Carlton's clothing store. Oh, okay. If you go into Carlton's clothing store, you could go back to the women's section, you climb a set of stairs. That's the original theater. Okay. And uh, and if you were to go up r r right near where the uh, checkout center is at Carlton's, you can go up and see where the projection room was. There are a lot of stories about the Blue Hen Theater, including being totally segregated. Yes, I'm sure. There were curtains, there were curtains to segregate the uh, the colored folk from the white back then, and. Uh, and so I could probably uh, go on for uh, 10 or 15 minutes about the Blue Hen Theater or, and, its, and its predecessors, which, were the, which was at the time the Casino Theater. There is a picture of uh, the Blue Hen Theater, which is said to be the opening day of the Blue Hen Theater. And I'll tell you, there are so many people in that picture. So, so many people will say to me, gosh, there wasn't anything here in Rehoboth back in those days, was there? I got to tell you, there was a lot of people here. And for the Blue Hen Theater opening, it was wall to wall. It looked like 4th of July in Rehoboth in non-COVID years. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was just, there were, there were thousands of people for that opening of yeah. what, what is said to be, uh, whether it was the opening of the Blue Hen Theater or not, doesn't make any difference. There were all these people right there in that grassy oval area. It's amazing. It's amazing what you've done, Paul. Um, on behalf of the museum, I have to thank you for everything that you've created for us, for these videos that you've done this year to help reach out because we haven't been able to, um, have people coming in the museum or do the things that we wanted to do with your diorama originally. So, uh, and I, like many other people have commented, I think what you're doing is just an amazing, amazing feat as far as getting these, all this history together and having it in a visual rather than just something to read about. So, so personally, I'm gonna thank you. And thank, thank you. you for coming today. Thanks for all the all the kind comments. I hope that we'll put a a button by each house and have a video for each uh, one that people can actually say, "Oh, okay, that's an interesting house." Here's a video about the history of that particular location. For sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, with no no more comments, I think we'll say goodbye and thank everybody for coming today. Thank you so much, Marty. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. Appreciate your waves. All right, I'm seeing Tariq, your questions, and thank you all the sponsors out there that yes. have been uh, so helpful in allowing this thing to, uh, to carry forward. Okay, bye-bye now. All right, bye everybody.